Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is BB-8 version 3, part 12. We're really getting there with this build. Last time I put these skins on and I've also got side panels that go on these holes here. Um, and these are really just access panels. But I made all these skins and stuck them on and started to paint it up. And today I'm going to do some more detailing on the body and also the head, which is going to be a kind of cutaway design, although it is going to have some skins on it and some details inside you can see. But before that, I'm going to give it another test drive because I've actually spent quite a long time tuning up software I've come to realise that no matter what your mechanical design is, it's software that really makes BB-8 perform like BB-8 and stay stable. So I've done quite a lot of pitch tuning on the stability, particularly for the side-to-side -side axis, and also smoothing out some of those variables and things for the head servos, which were a bit glitchy last time. So let's get right on and do a driving test. I think I'm about 80% there in terms of tuning and I'm driving this on a completely smooth floor now which is quite a good thing because it will have to run on a smooth floor in exhibition centres and so on. Um, so I've got rid of the cloth because it got rucked up when I turned on the spot and I've done quite a lot of tuning to make this run as best I can. Obviously it is better on carpet tiles but there we go. So let me just give this um, a run forwards. Might also just have to steer a bit. And I've got deceleration configured, so I have to stop before I want to or end up running into things. I have uh, lost the head quite a bit in testing. But on the whole, it's pretty stable. Um, let's just see if I can bank around a bit to its right. And it comes out of corners pretty well without wobbling too much. There is a bit of head dip when it stops and starts sometimes, but if I'm careful and I... Um, control the head manually as well, I can get rid of that. So that perhaps could be uh, the subject of further coding. So that's good. I've um, smoothed out that motion in the head there, as well as the front to back. And I can also um, do sort of a three stick maneuver to turn around. So if I get this the right way round, and I can do this, and I can spin around like that, which works quite well. I think I've seen BB-8 doing a similar manoeuvre in um, some interviews, so let's just drive around that way. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with the way it comes out of that turn. Let's just go over this way and... Oh, don't crash! Whoops. Yeah, the head will fall off if it crashes, but... Um... On the whole, it's not too bad. Let me just spin around again. And obviously I can do puppeteering moves like this by looking up and moving the head the other way. And stability pretty much keeps it stable. I could put uh, some further coding in that. At the moment it's just using the stability to decide what to do. I could have the thing I had in version two where the internals move the other way with a mode switch but I haven't got that for now, so let me just spin around the other way. Just come backwards and over this way a bit. And it's pretty good at staying stable out of the corners. It's hard in here to demonstrate, but um, if I do this, there was occasionally quite a bit of wobble if I came out of a tight bend. It's not too bad if I crash the body. It's normally if I hit the head on something that it has a bad time. So let's just go around here. There's a bit of head dip when it stops. Um, that's mainly due to the fact it can't pull the head up enough to compensate as the insides move. And if you could see them, you'd see why that was. Let's just spin around again. There we go. So it's got quite a lot of uh, sort of BB-8. I can do this as well with the flywheel and the body, which is quite a lot like BB-8 being confused or something. So I'm quite happy with the uh, puppeteering that I can do. And on the whole, that is much more stable than it was. I just wanted to show what difference tuning that PID controller has had, so if I give this a kick now, 
it pretty much sorts itself out by the time it comes back to the middle whatever I do to it there's some oscillating there which is just um, the head fighting the body which I probably need to configure a dead spot if I turn off the motor controllers and give that a kick obviously what we get is a, a big giant weebly which is why you really need the software and the sensor processing to stabilize it let me turn that back on there we go so that's stable again so um, on the whole pretty happy with how that's working and that's why it's so stable coming out of bends because otherwise it's just going to um, of course just sort of uh, lean over the other way really let's just spin that round again So yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that, although it's not perfect and there's a few things to sort out. What I wanted to say was that um, in order to keep that stable, it's actually using quite a lot of power. So I fused this for um, 35 amps. There's a 35 amp blade fuse in there, which is the biggest I can get in that size without moving up to something like a 40 amp breaker. And I have actually blown 35 amp fuses at 24 volts, which is 840 watts. And that's only for the three main drive motors. That doesn't include the head servos, which are pretty hefty as well. Those 5 amp regulators that are moving that head around, those are getting pretty warm. So I think they're near their capacity there at 12 volts. So uh, basically, it's actually wanting to use more power. So I think the actual demand for power is approaching a kilowatt. So um, that's what it's actually doing to move this mass around to keep it stable when I kick it and when it comes out of bends. And that's why I put the motors going around the outside of the ball and across runners instead of trying to actually motorize an axle because the amount of power you need to turn this thing round and to shift it to keep it stable, it's much easier to do it with that massive leverage angle that's five times less torque required. So it's time to do something with the head. I wanted to do something pretty special with this because I'm pretty sure it's going to go to shows and people are going to film it and take photographs of it. And basically I want people to know it's mine. So instead of just doing another head like last time, I'm actually going to do a cutaway head, which is inspired by the episode seven visual dictionary. So it's definitely going to have some panels and all the normal features. It's not going to be like my R6 droid, which is completely open, but it's going to have some panels open so we can see inside. We can have some of those fake mechanics and we know what they look like because they're in the book. So what I've done is taken a vacuum form. This is the other half of the globe that I used in version two, which is ABS and pretty tough, but it's also pretty heavy. So I've taken a vacuum form in one and a half mil styrene, which is much lighter. And um, having measured the 3D stuff before I did it, this conveniently fits uh, perfectly on top there. So I could just put this on and that would be it and layer up again to do the details. But in fact, I'm gonna cut some sections out and we're gonna make some very lightweight 3D printed stuff inside. So I've cut out some of those vacuum forms and I've also primed them up, but basically I've got various sections there. I've got kind of a one section piece there to go between two of these. Various other overlay pieces. So uh, for instance, that is where the eye will fit so there's a gap it's basically bits cut out and stuck over to get those seam lines so very similar to what I did before I've also printed some of the details but this time they're in ninja flex so if the head falls off and crashes into the ground they don't break at all which will be quite good and I should be able to just push the um, eye lens in there so there we go so that's pretty good so I'm going to get some of these glued on and some of these bits glued on and we'll see what comes after that here it is so far so I've stuck all those pieces on so I've got quite a lot to work with there. I'm gonna put some a platform inside between these sticks that hold the dome so that the internals go round with it. And obviously um, I need to make some holes for the electronics and things. And I'm probably just gonna have some LEDs. I think there's gonna be two little things there, but basically that's pretty easy to do. I can cut those out easily with a Dremel or something and some that float as well, which you can't see when the panels are on. All right, so it's a bit later in the day and I've stuck some more stuff on. I've painted this black inside here, stuck on that piece, importantly. I've got the silver ring, which is just a very thin piece of styrene glued all the way around, which I've painted silver. Stuck some raised details on. Again, this is exactly how I did both the other BB-8 heads. 
So I've just cut out styrene from that vacuum form and layered them up. I've got another section there for looking inside, some stuff on the back, and I've left some blanks on here for the panels that light up. I haven't decided what to do yet, but that's pretty much it in terms of its detail. So if you can imagine loads of stuff inside that you can see, some of it's gonna be real electronics like the actual Arduino and a little LiPo that powers the lights in the head, and some of it will be fake as per the Cutaways book. All right, so we're just gonna give it another test with the head on. I'm going to drive as careful as I can because it's mostly okay if I don't crash into anything. So uh, obviously there's the head there in all its glory. I'll have to imagine the other bits and pieces are on there and the aerials and all of that stuff. But let's, uh, I'm going to very carefully drive backwards. And if I dip the head forwards just as I stop, and we should be able to get rid of most of the issues. Let's just drive back here. Still a bit of wobble side to side in that head, but on the whole, yeah, I can steer pretty well. Let's take a sharp right. It tends to stay together okay, and I have to be quite careful what mass I add to the head, uh, just so that I don't end up with it really too heavy. So I have a tiny LiPo to go in, an Arduino and some NeoPixels. I think that's all that's going to be in there, so it should be okay, hopefully. Let's just try driving the other way up here. Whoa, whoa without crashing. So crashing, obviously still bad, especially if you just knock the head off as you're going or stop suddenly and it hits something, but I guess that's to be expected, really. Uh, let's try that again. I'm gonna drive down the end and try and turn around and come back. Let's see what happens to me. Making sure I've got enough stopping distance. Now let's spin around to my right. Oh, that didn't go too well. I think I'm on a bit of a seam in the tiles. It's quite a lot grippier. Oh, there we go. Which causes the ball to have a lot more drag on a smooth floor. There we go. That should be a lot more effective. All right, and I think I can see that just having that extra mass on the head has made it slightly less stable. So out of there. Seems to dip its head a lot more when it stops. But uh, I guess that's to be expected really. So I'll have to really, really ha uh, watch how much mass that I put in to make sure I don't have too many issues. So looking side to side is pretty much the same. Seems to work okay, still haven't done any extra coding on it. But there we go. That's actually all I've got time for in this episode because I spent quite a long time working out how to make it stable and writing the code. And of course all of that is published. I'm not going to go into too many details in the video because I think only certain people want to see it. But the link is in the description below. All of that code is on GitHub if you want to have a look how I've progressed through the versions. So next time I'm going to be working on the rest of the cosmetics, doing the patterns on the ball of course, and probably doing some detail in the head, getting some lights in. We'll have to do testing as we go and probably retuning to check that it doesn't become really unstable. Even the slightest weight in the head is going to make such a difference. I don't really want to add any more static mass down below because that will stop it turning on the spot so well. Um, and also it's already quite heavy. So I'd like to kind of solve it with software if I can, which I think I probably can. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out the social media links in the description to this video.